Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Carl Ashley, and I'm the chair of the Diversity Task Force. And I apologize for not being in person. Um, right now, I'm at a family law division judges meeting in Milwaukee. Although I'd rather be here. No, I shouldn't say that. I'm glad that I have an opportunity to communicate with you, even though I'm not here in person. It is January 29, 2013, uh, around noon. And I'm going to deliver my report uh, by starting out with our task or our charge. And the reason I take the time to do that, and I know you've heard it before, it, it always focuses our group and to get, make sure that we are in line with your request as a task force. And the diversity charge is as follows. The charge of the diversity task force is to determine the role of the state bar in promoting and furthering diversity within the law schools, the profession, and the state bar by identifying an approach to diversity that will serve the Wisconsin legal profession. This includes creating the state bar's definition of diversity, a future committee structure, organization-wide diversity initiatives, as well as the future of the diversity clerkship program and the diversity-based CLE programs. In addition, the state uh, bar task force will develop an action plan for the implementation of identified changes to create leadership opportunities for diverse lawyers within Wisconsin and the legal profession and articulate how diversity should inform, shape, and influence the work of the state bar across the organization. It's important for us to go over this, and I, I'm glad I have an opportunity to, to reinforce this to the Board of Governors, that we try to fight, make sure that we do the things to support this charge. And regarding the diversity, when I spoke to you last, and I want to reiterate this, although I'm not going to get the feedback I'd like to have if I was there in person, is to make sure I want, that you reach out to us so that at the end, when we make our recommendations, you feel, feel like you have been involved in the process and that your voices have been heard. For example, when I spoke to you last, we talked about the definition of diversity. And generally through the country, there's a couple of options. You can either have a more narrow definition of diversity or you could have a very broad definition of diversity. Or like Florida, you can say you're not going to define it because it's too um, difficult and restrictive. Our committee is taking a position that we're going to define it broadly. We're still wordsmithing the language. But we also are going to include the added um, information that the programming to address this group is going to have to be more specific. So we're not going to expect that all of the defined diversity members are going to be able to be resolved, their problems are going to be resolved by programming that's going to one size fits all. So that's, that's our logic. If you have things that you think we should consider about something like this, we want you to let us know now. Contact me, contact Sonabai, our staffer, she's wonderful, or any member of the diversity task force and you have a list uh, with all their names and contact information. The next thing I want to talk about is the issue of trying to get information regarding law firms, companies, how are they addressing the issue of diversity and inclusion. We thought about a survey and there was not a gnashing of teeth regarding that. And then ultimately we thought, and there was a suggestion from a member of the committee, and all unanimously agreed, that what we were going to do instead is request organizations to submit to us what their best practices are and do that in a format where it's sort of like a contest. And so ultimately we thought, you know, another survey? Or giving people an opportunity to, on their own, support the projects they're working on to be a model for best practices around the state. Let's see. Easy for us. We wanted to use the one where we're going to ask people to tell us the good things they do. Coincidentally, we talked to Joyce Hastings, the Director of Publications, and the liaison to the Communications Committee, and they were doing something similar, and that is featuring innovations in the legal community. Wow. The opportunity for us to collaborate uh, is, is great. 
they're going to be working with us. And I think that one of the things I want to impart to the, to the BOG, Board of Governors, is this. We think there's a lot of times where things don't get communicated, that there's opportunities that are missed. And I'm not saying this was a missed opportunity. In fact, it's working out great. But we'd like to think that we can embed things about diversity and inclusion throughout the state bar. So any of the committees, any of the programming that's going on, there's always a sense of how does this correlate with the state bar's commitment to diversity and inclusion. And so um, because of seeing that, uh, we also talked about the strategic plan. And we understand that the strategic plan, as it is now um, written, does not include specific language about the charge, and by that, I don't, I don't mean our charge totally, but just verbiage that talks about how important diversity and inclusion is in the state bar. And I am absolutely convinced that it's a high priority. Now, I will tell you, some of the people that we've contacted while we do our investigation are not so sure that the state bar has that commitment. And so in furtherance of that, our committee is going to ask, and we want to make sure we do it through the proper channels, we have communicated, that we'd like to see a sentence uh, to really reflect that in the black and white language of the strategic plan so that everybody knows when they look at the strategic plan of the state bar, it includes this affirmatively that diversity and inclusion is a huge deal. So we're going to ask that. And I know that uh, the President Pat Fiedler and the uh, President-elect um, Bob Gagan, who we've talked to as well as the chair of the Strategic Planning Committee, committee uh, Michael Waterman. We are all on the same page on this, and I know there's going to be some further communication. But as a committee, we are hopeful that the Board of Governors will support including that language. Now, uh, I want to also inform you that the committee is looking at doing some type of marketing to support uh, diverse lawyers to participate, law students and otherwise, and so we are thinking about making some recommendation in our final product about that. And although we're not there yet on the dynamics of that, what we do want to let you know is the National Back Law Student Association is having an event here, their national convention, March 12th through 16th. And I'm happy to say and proud that the State Bar is a sponsor. But we didn't want to lose the opportunity to use that as a platform to tell folks how great Wisconsin is for people of diverse backgrounds to practice law. So what we've done is we're going to collaborate with the National Black Law Student Association, Marquette University, Marquette Law School, and the local uh, Black Law Student Association and the State Bar to put together a product that will basically uh, tell the visitors it's going to be a little sound bite from what we call our stars from the Wisconsin area of color to talk about how great it is to be here. In other words, a little marketing. And I think it's really important that uh, Marquette and the bar stepped up in the short time frame to do this because it would have been missing a great opportunity to tell people how great it is to be here. So that's another thing going on. And by the way, I know that uh, the president, Pat Fiedler, will be speaking to that group. Uh, and I will be as well, and looking forward to that opportunity. And now I want to talk to you about the clerkship program, and uh, we're working on that. Uh, clearly, there is some issues with the clerkship pro program from the standpoint of the employers and the overwhelming number of students who want to get involved. So what we're trying to do is figure out how we can make that program function better on behalf of the students and the employers that are interested in being involved in this program. And I'll have to tell you in all candor that there is concern and has been concern voiced about the legal repercussions for isolating people, minorities, at the exclusion of others and the potential lawsuits associated with that. We understand that. We're doing our due diligence. We're going to take a look at the more recent law, but most of us are pretty convinced it's not gotten any uh, less problematic over time. Having said that, we're looking at a mentoring program that would give more flexibility to firms to have people of color involved in their uh, law firms or in their companies. And in fact, we're even going a step further so that when we ask people to participate in these types of programs, giving them a menu of other things they can do 
that could assist minority groups to be more involved in the legal profession. Those are things that are ongoing and we're working on those. And I want to leave with this, and this is the State Bar Diversity Declaration. Uh, was approved by the Board of Governors in 2012. The State Bar of Wisconsin is an inclusive organization committed to recognizing, respecting, promoting, and encouraging diversity among its leadership, its membership, and the entire legal community. We encourage all local and specialty bars to promote diversity and inclusion in their membership and leadership. We encourage legal employers and law firms to promote diversity and inclusion within their workplaces to mirror the world in which we practice. You know, we, when we look at this and people hear this, I think it's reasonable to assume that our strategic plans should embed this philosophy and a sentence or two would be great. Now I want to encourage you to get back to me and take ownership of what we're working on so that when we make our recommendations, we are not surprised, nor you, about any concerns that you have about anything we might potentially be doing. And we've had, got some com com contact from some folks uh, from the Board of Governors. We'd like to encourage that to continue. We are not doing this alone. We want your support. And we want at the end that you're joining us in the recommendations and not sort of like outsiders. Thank you again.